So any ties that you maintain with your relatives must be upon the basis of the Sharia. Not that you say, well, Allah commanded me to maintain the ties, so I'll go to the movies with them. Or I will listen to music with them. Or I will freely mix with the boys and girls, with the males and females, because I'm maintaining ties. That is not the intent of the sila, that is shari'i, or the, or the maintaining of the ties that is based upon Islamic law and the sharia. This means that you maintain ties, what did we mention? In terms of ilm, knowledge, that you are a cause for good, that you are a, a lighthouse that invites your family members to that which is khair and that which is righteous and that which is piety and that which is justice, that which is adal. Not that you join them in their sins and their corruption and their misguidance and their bid'ah or their shirk and their kufr. No, rather that you are a voice of reason, that you are a person who teaches them that which the Prophet ﷺ taught the people. So therefore, when you maintain those ties, there is a basis to maintaining those ties. That you are consistently upon piety. You are consistently upon good. You are consistently praying. You are consistently following the sunnah. You are consistently doing that which is halal. You are consistently keeping away from that which is haram and prohibited. That you smile with them in that which is good. And you advise them when you see something from them that is wrong. This is the meaning of maintaining the ties. The maintaining of the ties is not based upon or, you know, any type of connection. No, it, the basis of that is the deen. Why? Because the rahim, the rahim or the womb, will stand on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and complain to Allah for the breaking of the ties. And when it complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is seeking justice and adal. So the maintaining of the ties must be upon justice and adal. And we already mentioned in a previous lecture and in a previous dars where obedience to the parents is only in that which is good. Obedience to relatives and maintaining ties with relatives is not so that you can engage with them in sin and transgression because then you have sinned and they have sinned. What's the purpose of that? Your relationship with your family members and your relatives or with any Muslim is on the basis that you are bringing about good and you are bringing about khair. So therefore be cautious of cutting off of the ties of kinship that will lead to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and in the hereafter. All of our, all of our relationship and the, and, uh, relationships and the rights between the Muslims is based upon nearness to Allah. All of these narrations about the rahim, about the womb, what are they connected to? They are connected to obedience to Allah. The Rahim, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that the Rahim is derived from Ar-Rahman, meaning the term Rahim, which is the womb, is derived from Ar-Rahman. Maintaining the ties based upon what? Not based upon anything that you, the, the unconditional. No, they are conditions that you will teach and you will pray and you will give zakah and you will fast the month of Ramadan and you will not indulge in haram in front of them and likewise you will not see them indulging in haram and then you are a witness to that when you see your relatives doing something haram either you can stop them because you are the father or the older brother or the grandfather Someone of authority in the family. So you can say stop that. Because you have seen a sin. And you have the authority in the family to speak. And you say turn off that music. Turn off that film. Stop eating haram. Put out that cigarette. Because you have authority. So therefore they will obey your command like the father to his son. Or the grandfather to his grandchildren. And so on. Or an elder brother to the younger brothers. And the younger siblings. So you have some authority there. 
Or you don't have authority, but you are able to forbid because of your knowledge. So then you will say, my older brother, what you're doing is haram. Ya akhi, please, you need to stop that because the Prophet Sallallahu has forbidden that or Allah forbade it in the Quran. Or oh my cousin, what you're doing is haram. Or my uncle, what you're doing, what you're doing is haram. Allah is not pleased with the people who sin. So therefore you forbid the evil with your tongue and with your speech because you have knowledge. Or you're a person who has no authority and no knowledge and no ability. So sins are being committed around you and you are ignored. In fact, you may even be belittled and you don't have the authority nor the speech nor the power of speech to forbid or to advise because they don't listen to you. In fact, they might even mock you and shout at you or harm you. In that situation, what do you do when you see your relatives doing something haram? What do you do? You do not become a witness to evil. Do not become a witness to evil. When you see them committing haram, listening to music, smoking cigarettes, drinking wine, doing a khatam, after someone's death or doing something of innovation and bid'ah in the house maybe they've called the peer around and you don't have the ability you don't have the authority you don't have the the know-how shara'an in the islamic law you have no knowledge or the ability or the strength to do anything so what do you do sit there and witness it you know it's haram in your heart you leave barakallahu feekum go to your room and sit there up until they're finished. Or if it is not your home, you say, I'm sorry, I'm leaving. You leave. Don't be a witness to batil and falsehood and zor and falsehood and wickedness and evil. Because it is not permissible to sit with them whilst the signs of Allah are being mocked. Whilst the law of Allah and the rule of Allah and the judgment of Allah that it is being opposed. You cannot sit there. It is not permissible for you to sit there whilst the signs of Allah are being mocked and flouted. And you just sit there and smile because you feel awkward. Stand up and leave. And if they ask you why the next day or later on, you say, because I don't want to be a witness to evil. Because Allah may question me yawm al-qiyamah. That did I not give you feet to walk out? You could not speak, but you didn't have legs? Didn't I give you wisdom? Didn't I give you an aql to think with? Yet you sat there whilst people were drinking and mocking and joking about the deen of Allah and watching films with sin and transgression and music and dance and free mixing. I didn't give you feet to get up and walk out with. So, you're, so when the next day they ask you, why did you walk out? You offended so and so and so and so. Say, I did not intend to offend anyone. All I intended was the pleasure of my Lord. And I don't want to be a witness when Allah is being disobeyed. And they'll ask you, when was Allah being disobeyed? Say, Allah is not pleased that music is listened to. Allah is not pleased that men and women mix freely. Allah is not pleased that people are drinking. Allah is not pleased that people are dancing and mixing freely with frivolity. Allah is not pleased with that. So I don't want to be a witness to that. Allah is not pleased that bid'ah takes place. So I will not witness that. That's why I walked out. So this is the relationship. And say to them, but I will maintain ties with you. But I will not compromise around my religion. So don't ask me to compromise my religion. This is the deen of Allah. I will follow the sunnah. I will follow the sahaba radiallahu anhum. I was brought into this world to the, for the worship of Allah, not for the worship of men or the enslavement of men to men. Allah did not create jinn, no mankind except to worship him alone. That's my purpose. So why am I going to? I didn't come here to disobey Allah. I'm not walking upon this earth in disobedience to Allah and disobedience to his messenger.